Good morning, and welcome to Washington National Cathedral on this Friday, March the 3rd. I'm Rose Duncan Cannon for worship, and we're so pleased that you decided to join us today for this service of prayer and reflection. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us pray. God of compassion, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have reconciled your people to yourself. As we follow his example of prayer and fasting, may we obey you with willing hearts and serve you and one another in holy love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear these words from Psalm 130. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him, in his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchman for the morning, more than watchman for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. The reading comes from the fifth chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on the way to court with him, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. Today's gospel reading is a portion of the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus teaches about the kingdom of God and the role of the disciples in building that kingdom. Only a few verses after the Beatitudes, Jesus now focuses on the importance of reconciliation one of the most basic themes of Lent. Jesus is clear that we need to be on good terms with others before we can enter or be part of the kingdom of God, being reconciled with God and with one another. He is teaching us about relationships, teaching us about humility, and the need to have the courage to admit our own mistakes or shortcomings. One of the hardest things in our culture is to admit wrongdoings. Phrases like, mistakes have been made, only serve to separate us from our actions that may negatively impact individuals or communities. We must remember that reconciliation is a process. However, the first and most important step in reconciliation is the confirmation of genuine repentance on the part of the offender. Jesus suggests that this work of reconciliation takes priority even over the act of worship. Leave your gift there before the altar and go. 
First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Jesus speaks clearly about the importance of doing all we can to build right relationships with others. No matter our past, we can begin anew in the spirit of repentance in this Lenten season, for our God is rich in mercy, just as today's psalmist affirms. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, for with the Lord there is mercy. There is always a radical quality to the call of Jesus and to his teachings. He never allows us to settle and to become comfortable with the status quo. Today, Jesus is calling for the renewal of our hearts and minds, both required for repentance and the building of right relationships. During this Lenten season, let us try to listen to what that call might mean for each one of us here and now. And may we be reminded that reconciliation brings us back to the heart of God. Amen. Please join me in the words our Savior taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord Christ, our eternal Redeemer, grant us such fellowship in your sufferings that filled with your Holy Spirit, we may subdue the flesh to the Spirit and the Spirit to you, and at the last attain to the glory of your resurrection, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Grant, Almighty God, that your people may recognize their weakness and put their whole trust in you and your strength, so that they may rejoice forever in the protection of your loving providence through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>